Today we're going to learn how to do fluorescence microscopy. So we're starting with a slide that has some cells on it that are in a mounting medium with a piece of cover glass sitting on top. So we'll put our slide first on the stage. And this stage is sitting in between our light source at the bottom here and our detector at the top, which is our camera, or it could also be your eyes if you look through the eyepiece. And we have a few elements in between our light source and our camera that help us direct the light where we want it to go. So for example, we want a nice even illumination on our sample, and then we want to collect the light that's transmitted through our sample with uh, an objective lens, and then we want to focus that image of our sample onto our detector. And the way that we direct light to move in these different ways is with lenses. And you might be familiar with lenses. Uh, you might have one on your camera. You might wear some on your face if you wear glasses. And you also have the lens that's in your eye that allows you to focus an image of the world onto your retina in your eye. Um, and these lenses do similar things. And the reason that they're able to direct light in particular ways is because light moves at different speeds through different materials. So it moves at a different speed when it's moving through air or when it's moving through glass or water or any other material. And as light changes its speed, it bends or refracts. And so we can shape these lenses in particular ways to move the light in, in the way we want it to. And so the important lenses for today are first the condenser lens, which allows us to have nice even illumination on our sample, the objective lens that I already mentioned that collects the light that's being transmitted through our sample. That's why we call this form of microscopy transmitted light microscopy. And then we have some internal lens elements that focus uh, the image of our sample onto our detector or the camera. So let's take a transmitted light image of these cells here. In our transmitted light image, we can see our cells and we can even see some subcellular structures like the nucleus. But if we wanted to localize a particular protein of interest, such as actin, we aren't able to because we can't differentiate that protein from the rest of the molecules in the cell. So fluorescence can help us because we can use a fluorescent molecule to label our protein of interest to make it stand out from the background of the cell. But now that we're using fluorescence, we're going to change our light path a little bit. So we first want to illuminate our sample, not with white light, but with a particular color of light because we want to use the wavelength of light that excites our fluorescent molecule. And then we don't want to collect the light that's transmitted through our sample, but we want to collect the light that's emitted from our fluorescent molecules that's a slightly higher wavelength, a different color of light. And so in order to separate these two light paths, we use a filter cube. And the filter cubes are housed here and they have an excitation filter that picks a particular color of light to excite our fluorescent molecule. In this case, if we're using GFP, we'll use a blue light. And that blue light will then bounce off a dichroic mirror. And if I open a shutter here, we'll see that it's made it to our sample. That blue light will excite our fluorescent molecules. And those molecules will then emit green light, a slightly longer wavelength of light. That light will be collected by our objective lens. It will be filtered through our emission filter and arrive at our detector, our camera. And now if we look at the image of our cells that we get from this fluorescent microscope, we see that things look different. We only see our actin structures and we see a green image. Now you might have labeled some other proteins in your cells with a different fluorescent molecule. And in order to see them, you would be able to use a different filter cube. So if I turn this wheel here, I'm changing which filter cube I'm using. It has a different excitation and emission filter. And so we can see that now we're exciting our fluorescent molecule with, say, a green light. And we're collecting a slightly longer wavelength of light, maybe an orange light. And we can see a different structure, maybe the mitochondria, that we've labeled with a different fluorescent dye. Remember, we use a filter cube to separate out our excitation and our emission light. So let's take a look at a filter cube up close. So first we have our emission filter, our excitation filter, and the dichroic mirror positioned between them at a 45 degree angle.
So let's put it all together. We'll take a look at our transmitted light image and we'll overlay our actin in green, our mitochondria in orange, and our nucleus in blue. So I hope this has allowed you to appreciate why this is such a powerful technique to be able to visualize individual cells and proteins of interest even in living samples.